Hey guys, welcome back. So, I wanted to do a project with a new snowblower, and I spent some time figuring out which machine would be worth improving upon further, modifying, you know, what had good bones to begin with, and what was a sturdy platform to work with when trying to make a good machine a phenomenal machine. Well, that may be a high mark to reach, but uh, I feel like this snapper, uh, this is a 1030, seems like it's a pretty good platform to work with. Um, I've already done a few things to it, and uh, I'll go over the details of it and uh, what I plan uh, for the future on this thing. But I imagine that this is going to be a pretty mean machine when it's all said and done. All right, so let's get into the overview here. Um, this is a, from what I can figure out, a 1995 Snapper 1030. So 1030 meaning it was a 10 horsepower Tecumseh and it was a 30 inch wide bucket. Now, uh, when they were rating these things back in the day, these Tecumsehs, 10 horsepower uh, then is not the same as 10 horsepower now because they changed the metric in which they judge it. So um, all the 10 horsepower anything, it doesn't matter what the brand was. If it was Tecumseh, that means that it got a 358cc engine. Uh, it's a flathead. And uh, I mean, they're, they're kind of brutish. Uh, they're certainly loud, but uh, they do make quite a bit of torque and uh, they definitely get the job done. Uh, in this case, I already went over this motor. Um, I pulled the head and replaced the carb and did a valve job and lapped the valves in properly. So it's, uh, it's pretty healthy. Uh, as far as the cross hatching in the cylinder, they were still there. Uh, I was really not concerned with that. Um, so it's all back together. It's running with a new fuel line. Uh, like I said, new carb adjusted properly and uh, it's strong. It's certainly strong. So the idea now is how do we make uh, the rest of the machine, you know, uh, more potent and utilize uh, what this uh, 358 CC Tecumseh, you know, what can it do for us? So one of the first things I noticed when I was using this machine is how absolutely atrocious the chute was. Man, um, I already changed it. So uh, I guess I should have made a video doing that, but this is a Honda chute from an HSS uh, 928. So it came with a single deflector on the top. Uh, it's cable driven. Uh, it had the collar on the bottom that uh, gave some issues for certain people with wet snow. Uh, but in this case, the collar really helps to improve how the snow leaves the impeller, remains organized, and how far it shoots. Um, it's a, it was a drastic improvement. Um, the second problem with the original setup was the uh, shoe controls, well, I mean, you turn the shoe in either direction and the second the engine was running, forget it. Uh, it would just vibrate itself back straight again because of the way the deflector is uh, works. So this is a push-pull cable. Uh, the factory setup was a solid core push-pull cable and it was... Uh, just like a little short uh it was too rigid as far as the sheathing goes and man it would just vibrate this thing straight so you would go to hit uh far left or far right it was the exact same scenario and when the engine was running it would just find itself walking back walking back walking back to somewhere around here uh either way so if it was facing left it would walk back to about there you know it was just very very annoying um and when you had it turned in either direction, you could not move this deflector. It would fight you the whole time. So what I did is I took um, a cable off of a, this happens to be an HS724 uh, deflector cable that I had laying around and I made a bracket. I ran it to a bracket, mounted it on the side, uh, used some hardware that I was able to pick up and scrounge up and made it so that the factory cable now ties in and simply bolts to the end of the uh, wire, flexible wire core cable. 
and it doesn't have to push or pull because there's a return spring on the top of the deflector. So now this thing easily, like easy peasy, locks into place wherever you want it to, and it doesn't walk back anywhere as well. Also, uh, I got rid of the snow hogs. I mean, snow hogs were great for years and years and everything, but uh, these Carlisle extracts are just absolutely a cut above when it comes to traction uh, in any scenario. Um, if you have a crazy steep hill that you have to uh, snow blow, well, extracts will be your best friend because they simply just grip better. Um, they're directional tread too. So, I mean, I have them facing forward, but the uh, the the beauty of directional treads is that if you were to flip these wheels from side to side, uh, you would change the, the direction, essentially how it's an arrow pointing forward and you have an arrow pointing back. And that even further increases the amount of forward traction you have. I just leave it like this because it's plenty. And uh, if you get yourself in a weird rut, um, having them face in this direction uh, definitely improves its ability to reverse out of a big, you know, mushy mess of deep snow. Next, I also replaced the side skids that were steel with these Arnold uh, roller wheel ones. Um, I didn't know how I was going to feel about them. Uh, they seem kind of like a novelty item. Uh, I can't say one way or another if they're going to hold up just because the, uh, the material itself is definitely like a cheap plastic. Um, but I guess because it doesn't have to uh, grind along the paved surface as you snow blow and it rolls. Uh, I imagine they're going to hold up reasonably well. Um, time will tell, but for now they seem to work pretty good. Uh, no complaints. If it's on a, on like a nice smooth driveway or in your garage or something like that, and you just kind of got to scoot the snowblower around a bit, uh, it's nice because it just rolls and the skids aren't grinding on the concrete. And I guess that's a good thing. So, what am I looking to do in the future? Well, uh, the 10 horse engine was plenty torquey. Uh, in fact, it was almost too torquey for the factory belt uh, that drives the auger. Uh, this thing would just slip. Uh, when I would go into really heavy, wet, end of driveway slop from the plow, uh, forget it, man. This, uh, the belt would always slip. You would hear it squealing. Uh, the snow that was shooting easily like 20, 30 feet uh, was just lobbing out, you know, maybe like six feet or something like that. So something had to be done there. Um, and I did replace the auger belt with a industrial belt. It was just a simple Gates 37-inch uh, long industrial belt. Uh, if you were to look up on the internet what size belt this takes... They also say it, it takes a half inch by 38. Uh, it does not. Half inch by 38 is far too long. And half inch by 37 just fits because fortunately this older machine has an adjustable uh, tensioner pulley on it. So it can accommodate for a little extra slop. In which case uh, it just barely fits. Uh, the 2.75 inch diameter uh, drive pulley that's on the crankshaft of the motor. Now, uh, that's my little segue to what I plan on doing to this thing next. Um, 2.75 inches. That's what we have for the drive pulley on the crank PTO. Uh, I plan on upgrading that. Uh, I want to go to three and a quarter inches uh, for two reasons. Uh, secondly, oh, I mean, well, firstly, uh, the engine's plenty strong and... Uh, it should be able to handle it, especially because the uh, the forward speeds, especially in first gear on this thing, is nice and slow. So if you get into something that's really thick and heavy and wet, um, the drive speed going forward is quite slow. So it's not going to really you know overwork by trying to plow through a berm at mock speed. Um, and secondly, as far as the slipping condition is concerned, uh, just having a larger diameter pulley with uh once you up the diameter you up the circumference and now you have more belt contact with the pulley so i feel like that would definitely help as far as uh taking all that torque from the motor and being able to apply it to the belt without it just slipping so i'm gonna take some footage and we're gonna make a video of how far this thing throws this uh super sloppy wet 
snow that we have after today's rain. Um, and I'll be upgrading the pulley and have a comparison video and we'll see how we do. All right, so what I wanna do here is I want to quantify the changes that we make too. Um, so I'm gonna make sure that the engine RPM is uh, set to wherever I need it to be, which in this case, 3600 is about as much as you really wanna rev one of these old flatheads. Um, and I'm gonna be using a DTI tachometer. Uh, it's great, you just simply keep it near the spark plug and the wire and it'll pick up on the RPMs. Um, the resolution is fantastic. Uh, it's a very, very uh, fast sample rate. Um, goes to 20,000, which is great for big two strokes, uh, like um, chainsaws and stuff where you, you don't want to be maxing out. It's, uh, you know, it's full uh, wide open throttle RPMs when you're checking them. So that's tool number one. Tool number two here is a laser tachometer. Now, the way this works is you place a reflective strip. It doesn't have to be the whole thing, maybe a little piece. Um, and you place it on whatever it is that's revolving and you want your tachometer to uh, use to reflect its laser off of to give you a digital reading. Um, so we're gonna do some before and afters also on what the RPMs are. Okay, so the machine's warmed up. Um, I checked my uh, with my tachometer. My full throttle setting is 3,500 RPMs currently. So we're just going to go ahead and stick with that for now. Um, I'll fire it up. Um, I'll keep the auger engaged, and we'll see if you could actually get a decent view of the laser tack from this angle. So here I am, fired up the machine, um, I have a spring clamp on the auger control lever, and uh, everything's spinning, and I'm now taking the uh, laser uh, tack over to try to you know, point it at the reflector strip on the impeller. Well, this is a cheap Chinese Amazon laser tack, and uh, it has like a uh, pinpoint laser for targeting the reflector. Um, it's completely off, so it takes some time to figure it out, and um, it looks like I'm practically in the auger housing while I'm doing this. Uh, I assure you that I have a few inches, and uh, it's really just the angle, but um, do be careful. Let me say that. Definitely be careful doing this. Well, we had basically 1,100 RPMs practically on the nose. So that'll be our start point with the factory 2.75 inch uh, drive pulley. All right, so here we are. Um, this is the test run using the 2.75 inch pulley. Um, and I kind of goofed and I didn't really didn't get a wide enough angle on this. But um, you can see that uh, it's got a pretty decent lob to it. It throws pretty nice. I have an impeller kit already stalled. Um, the belt is not slipping through the snow, which is just absolutely saturated and so heavy. Um, but uh, you can clearly see that the machine throws pretty well to begin with. Now the real question is, how well will it throw when we upgrade the pulley size? Alright, so this wraps up part one. Uh, in part two, I'll show you the removal of the old drive pulley, the installation of the new three and a quarter inch drive pulley. Uh, we'll take another reading with the laser tack, see what our impeller speeds bump up to, and take this thing for a test drive and see how it does blow in snow. Alright, thanks for watching.